Yes. Did they use mad? Is that why they washed away? I don't know what's happening. You got to use here. the Sharpie, the permanent marker. When you use the magic markers, they get wet. It wipes right off. All right, let's take it to a spot where it's not wet right now. In Dallas, you are going to be watching for showers and thunderstorms you've seen around already today. And we'll keep an eye to the sky across this part of the country for more of that stormy action through the rest of today. More storms ahead for the southern plains, parts of Arkansas, even western Tennessee will be watching for that threat as well. Shreveport area, really off to the south, we've been watching this mass of rain really fizzle out. But some thunderstorms off towards the south of Dallas, then we've seen a little bit more off towards the north, probably skirting just off towards the east of the Dallas metro area. Further up to the north, though, this is an area we're keeping a close eye on. You can see we've got storms, one severe in the northeast corner of the state of Arkansas and into western Tennessee. We're going to watch for that threat or that potential for large hail, also damaging winds as we go through the next few hours. Here's the warned area just off towards the south and west of Jonesboro. Hail, gusty winds for those counties that are outlined in that yellow. Don't know why they weren't pop up, but visible satellite picture. What we've got are some areas that saw a little bit more sunshine, and that's why we're seeing those thunderstorms fire now. Take a look, eastern uh, parts of Arkansas, where we just saw those storms. Well, earlier they had the sunshine. Now we've seen those thunderstorms fire and those high cloud tops showing up in the brighter whites. Today, we've got thunderstorms from San Antonio to Dallas to Shreveport to Little Rock and western Tennessee. You're going to be watching for that as well. Torcon values of 3 out of 10 for central and northeast Texas. That's your tornado condition index meaning chance of a tornado within 50 miles of a given location. So a 30% chance of a tornado in these areas. Hail, damaging wind, though, also going to be threats. And as we've seen, the wind can cause just as much of a problem as a tornado. In St. Louis, hit or miss storms during your late part of your workday through the rest of the evening. Hit or miss showers and some rain, I'd say, around dinner time. So uh, no grilling, Dave. No grilling. No grilling. Unless Come you like on. grilling in the rain, but that's always kind of a bummer. You know, you can grill out here in Minneapolis. Oh, I know it's cloudy, but there's not going to be any rain around here. We've got dry air blowing into town. You will need a jacket out there by the grill. All the heavy rain is up in northern Minnesota. And get this, up here at International Falls today, 2.95 inches of rain. This far from the Gulf, three inches of rain in one day. Flood warnings are in effect. Heavy rain out here in St. Louis County in northern Minnesota, north of Duluth. Watch the travel. Meanwhile, here in the Midwest, things are going to go from pretty much great as we have now. We have a northwest flow. Huh, some dry air moving in here. You're going to feel that in St. Louis tonight. Omaha, we've got it already. It's lovely. But this storm is on the move. This dry air will only hang in for so long. It's going to be impatient. Winds will switch around to southerly on Saturday. The storm gets closer to us. There's our cold front becomes a warm front as the warm air moves north up to the Great Lakes. The storminess from the Pacific Ocean comes in and vavoom, you end up with thunderstorms. Now we got Father's Day weekend coming up, so let's check it out. Friday, tomorrow afternoon, Western Dakotas. Saturday, the severe weather over to Minneapolis to Huron, South Dakota, southward to Omaha and Wichita, and then Sunday, thunderstorms as far east as Chicago and St. Louis. Alex? Thank you, Dave. Now take a look at what's going on in the tropics. We've got the very impressive Category 4 Hurricane Christina. The best part of this storm is that it's well off the coast of Mexico and it's headed towards the north and west. But when a hurricane does threaten the coast and you're told to evacuate, do it. But take note that a lot of evacuation zones have changed in the past few years. Senior hurricane specialist Brian Norcross helps to raise your Hurricane IQ. Hurricane evacuations. Highways are jammed in the rush to get out. Confusion about who should and shouldn't evacuate adds to the chaos. So the question you might ask, am I in an evacuation zone? Just because you weren't in an evacuation zone last year doesn't mean that new technology hasn't changed the boundaries. And some of the changes are big. For example, both New York City and Miami-Dade County have updated their evacuation maps, adding nearly 2 million people. More cities will soon follow suit. That's because big storms can alter the topography of the shoreline, and new technology allows better measurements of the height of the ground. It's done with an airborne mapping system called LIDAR, essentially a radar system using a laser. 
The result is a very accurate mapping of the seafloor, the shoreline, and the areas that the storm surge might flood. So remember, evacuation zones can change. Make sure to check with your town or the Office of Emergency Management. Listen for updates from local officials. And be ready if the evacuation order comes if you live in an evacuation zone. Evacuation zones can change. So you might think that you you need to get out, but maybe they've changed. So check it. Uh, yeah, if you're along the, the coast, do a little research. Right. Make sure you know before it's too late. You don't want to do it at the last minute. You said it much better than I did. Thanks. I mm -hmm. All right. Hurricane Christina strengthens to Category 4. As we just told you, we've got the full tropical update. You've got the tro full tropical update. No, you've got the big tropical update. You do. No, you do. <laughs> Currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Tonight, thunderstorms early, low 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, high 86. Here's our seven day outlook. loses power, it can be tough for your family. But not if your family has a Kohler generator. Restores power automatically in as little as 10 seconds and is backed by a five-year limited warranty. Kohler Generators. Keep your family flowing. When the power goes out, you'll go on. Contact your Kohler Generators dealer today. Introducing Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofing Stain. The seal just got better. With stain and sealer in one, and easy to choose colors, exceptional beauty and protection have never been easier. New Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofing Stain, exclusively at the Home Depot. Introducing Thompson's new line of waterproofing stains. Easy to choose, easy to use. Uh, hey everyone, it's KFC game night, and dinner at the table is approaching, I think, something like 12 minutes. Which shatters the previous family record of four minutes of them sitting mm -hmm. still. Mm. Thanks to 12 extra crispy tenders, four dipping sauces, two sides, and biscuits. And a free I Spy game right on the bucket. They love playing the game. I Spy a Tiger. I spy yeah! <laughs> it's really good. Is it good? I kind of want to do this every Friday. Yeah! Missing a deadline. Will I get there in time? Am I going too fast? Did I close the garage door? Stay in your lane. I don't think I sent that email. I should make a reservation. I thought it was clear. Okay, break. I didn't see that coming. Its instinct to protect leaves you free to drive. Lease the Infinity Q50 for $369 a month. This season, we're taking back the backyard. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Kill bugs and keep them out for up to 12 months. Ortho, now just 488. I'm M-A-R-Y, and I have COPD. I'm J-E-F-F, and I have COPD. I'm L-I-S-A, and I have COPD. But I don't want my breathing problems to get in the way of hosting my book club. That's why I asked my doctor about BREO. Once daily, Brio Ellipta helps increase airflow from the lungs for a full 24 hours. And Brio helps reduce symptom flare-ups that last several days and require oral steroids, antibiotics, or hospital stay. Brio is not for asthma. Brio contains a type of medicine that increases risk of death in people with asthma. It is not known if this risk is increased in COPD. 
Brio won't replace rescue inhalers for sudden COPD symptoms and should not be used more than once a day. Brio may increase your risk of pneumonia, thrush, osteoporosis, and some eye problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking Brio. Ask your doctor about Brio for COPD. First prescription free at mybrio.com. Of all the things that happen on your counters. Dad? Namaste. Disinfecting should be one of them. Clorox disinfecting wipes. Do you have something for pain? I have Bayer Aspirin. I'm not having a heart attack. It's, uh, it's my back. I mean Bayer Back and Body. It works great for pain. Bayer Back and Body provides effective relief for your tough pain. Better? Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Done. Top five time. We take a look at all of Mia's amazing video from around the world. And we start with World Cup fever in space. Fans around the world have tuned in to the start. I've seen it all over Twitter and Facebook, but astronauts, they're cheering and playing. Look at these guys. In I space. mean, they choreographed this. Yeah, they huh? did. They sent that out a special message mm -hmm. to wish good luck. That is real game action. You now, know? I would like to see some of those teams compete at that level. Number four, how about President Bush Sr.? He turns 90, he jumps out of a helicopter. What a heck of a way to celebrate a birthday, huh? He was the nation's 41st president. Tandem jumped from about 6,000 feet. He did land it safely. Yes, we saw pictures on the internet. He did land safely. President Bush, mazel tov. Happy yeah. birthday. Number three, quarter-sized hail last night from Britain, South Dakota. A developing wall cloud also for us eerie fog and rain. Quite an active day in yeah. Britain, South Dakota. You know, the hail falls, it cools the air and fog forms. There hail fog. Go. Look at that. A huge supercell in Burlington, Colorado makes our top five um, as number two. Look at the structure of that thing. Huh? Wow. Wow. To the right, the downdraft, the hail and the heavy rain. And then where you see the clouds clearly, that's where the updrafts are. You know, that's I said you don't even fall. have the ghost storm chasing now. You basically just did it on your couch. Right here on the Weather Channel, right. Number Look at one, that. The thunderstorm cloud. sweeping through Pennsylvania last night. Funnel cloud forming over a Greensburg shopping center is what you're looking at. And this would uh, make any shopper a little bit nervous. Yeah, if that really is a... Um, yeah, hard to tell hard because, to tell you know, anything's spinning there. We're yeah. looking at it behind that, the, the street light or the, the parking lot. Right, lamps. and the quality of it, a little pixely too. Right. But still scary to see that. You, you will see a cloud like that sometimes, and it, not, it is not a funnel cloud. Right. You can upload your videos anytime at weather.com slash photos. And we thank everybody for those great photos, yeah. by the way. You know, parts of California are under exceptional drought these days, and that's causing quite a predicament for salmon trying to swim to the Pacific Ocean. Claudia Lombana shows us how they are hitching a ride to the deep blue sea. Hmm. It's moving day at the Coleman National Fish Hatchery in Anderson, California, and this isn't just any move. It's the move of nearly half a million fall Chinook salmon smolts. The environmental conditions are much worse than we would normally want to have when our fish are being released. These guys are usually released into Battle Creek near the hatchery. Now, you might look at this gorgeous rushing creek and think, what drought? But it's not that simple. You see, to reach the ocean, these salmon smolts must make a more than 300-mile journey to the Sacramento River through the delta into the San Pablo Bay. But California's massive water shortage means some of those waterways are just too dangerous. It's primarily low water volume in the lower Sacramento system and also extremely high temperatures. The temperatures that we're seeing right now are probably in the mid-70s. It's a pretty wild sight as these small fish in these big ponds are pumped right through a hose and into temperature controlled trucks. The salmon smolts that are here at the Coleman Hatchery in these raceways are considered juveniles. They're only about six months old, but they need to be moved now in order to ensure their survival. And that's because of the biological changes that they're going through. That only happens in a, in a specific period of time and the fish need to go. They're ready to make that transition to the, to the ocean entry right now. The salmon hitch a ride for the distance they would normally swim. 
Nearly four hours later, they arrive at San Pablo Bay, about 30 miles from San Francisco. It's release time, and I'm allowed to get in on the action. With the simple pull of a lever, it's a super cool silvery dance of freedom. It actually brings to mind the saying, plenty of fish in the sea. Once they're all safely in the pen, they're pulled out to the ocean for their final release, hopefully overcoming at least one of the negative effects of California's drought. For the Weather Channel, I'm Claudia Lombana. Thanks, Claudia. That was an interesting story. It was really fish, neat. Fish catching a hitch. Almost looks like a, like a wormhole they're traveling through or something. I know, when they released them, huh? Very, very cool stuff. Well, we continue to track a major hurricane today, bigger than the government thought it would be at this point. We'll show you where Hurricane Christina is right now and where the storm is headed and right after your local on the 8th. That's how a home and auto bundle is made. Better he learns it here than on the streets. The miracle of bundling. Now that's progressive. As a commercial beekeeper, Dave tracks the Weather Channel forecast closely, predicting when crops across the country will bloom and need bees for pollination. At a moment's notice, he loads and trucks thousands of bees, keeping his eye on the weather to ensure his fragile cargo makes it to the blooms on time. When the bees and blooms matter, Dave turns to the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Tonight, thunderstorms early, low 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, high 86. Here's our seven day outlook. What's a born maker made from? From small steps, giant leaps, big ideas, and sharp minds. All the things that make a born maker made this a car with swagger, intelligence, soul. A car that proves a well-made sedan doesn't have to cross an ocean to be worthy of the American road. The all-new Chrysler 200, America's import. Things have changed. Someone say burn. Try Alka Seltzer Relief Chews. They work just as fast and are proven to. This family may love their tree, but a colony of ants will use these branches on a roof line, like the Autobahn. But I know where they are. Going from here to there. And what time of year to bait them with protein? When to bait with fat? I just shut down their freeway like a jackknife 18 wheeler. To catch a pest, you've got to think like a pest. Not just in any home, in your home. So I remember my GPA from college, uh, and I know my IQ. Okay. Uh, and I know, uh, I know, I know what blood type I have. Oh wow. Uh huh. Yeah. They're I don't know pretty... my credit score. You don't know your. Credit I don't score? know my credit score. That's really important. I mean, I don't know my. Don't you want to buy a house like ever? You should probably check out Credit Karma. It's free. Credit Karma. Free. Right. Free. So that's how much? That's how much it's free. Credit Karma. Really free credit scores. No credit card needed. Go. And shipping is always free. 
Visit DealDash.com and start bidding today. The Weather Channel's new morning show. It all starts with the weather. America's Morning Headquarters with Sam Champion. Weekday mornings at 7, only on the Weather Channel. Wow, you want to see an awesome eye of a hurricane? This is it. Now, this is as of five, six hours ago. You're looking straight down into the hole, the eye of Hurricane Christina. 150 mile per hour winds at this point. Perfectly symmetrical. The eye wall where the worst winds are right in here, everything's symmetrical. These bands, upper level transverse bands, they call them indicative of a very intense hurricane. We'll now take a look at the eye of this hurricane. There's a lot more to the right eye wall. See how thick it is from here to here? than there is on the eastern eye wall. So it's beginning to become less symmetrical. And as we switch over to infrared satellite imagery, we see that this is beginning to break up. The west side of it, we believe it's encountering dry air. Dry air is being drawn into this. And the west side of it, notice the cold cloud tops that were circling the eye right there. The purple, they're gone on the west side. Another indication that this hurricane has seen better days, and that's good news. Of course, it's not affecting anybody. Some high surf on the Mexican coast up there, the west coast of Mexico, but other than that, it's out to sea. 270 miles to the west southwest of Montanillo, Mexico. That's where the eye is at the present time, and it continues to move west northwest at eight miles an hour. Pressure down for the first time today, 140 mile per hour. Pressure is up. Forecast models continue to take it near Socorro Island here in Mexico, a very sparsely populated area. They're used to this kind of thing, and all the computer models take it toward the west or west northwest into colder water into drier air indicated by the oranges here on this satellite interpretation. So we'll be done with uh, hur this hurricane within a day or two. Hurricane Christina, category four, forecast to continue weakening tonight and tomorrow and become less than a hurricane this weekend. That's a look at the hurricane on the Atlantic side, Gulf and Caribbean, it's all clear. Alex, back to you. Thank you so much, Dave. You know what time it is? Is that? That's 1997 era, Dave, I see. So I think it is time for Throwback Thursday. And you know, this upcoming Father's Day weekend has us feeling a little bit nostalgic. So we are dedicating this week's throwback to our dads. We're gonna start with a look at my dad, Scott Wilson. He braved a ball pit for little Alex. I just wanted to go in that ball pit and he took me in the, now that I'm a grown up, I know that's probably gross, but you know, Western North Carolina, we did some zip lining and that's just us last, last uh, summer when they came down to visit me here in, in the ATL. That's proud papa, that's Scott. I mean, that's, your father looked like a kid there, he, you know, in the ball pit. He pretty much was, <laughs> they had me very, very young, which is kind of cool, because now I have like, you know, parents who are, you know, they can still party. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I have Alex? a brother, Matt. Now yeah. he's a nurse, my mom's a nurse, my dad is a nurse anesthetist, How and as like I told that? you last hour, blood freaks me out. So take your daughter to work day was never something I was gonna do with my right. dad. So, you, so the, the, the nurse tradition is over, it's starting broken. with you. I've broken it. All right, let's take some looks at your dad. Yeah, here we go. Happy Father's Day to my dad. That's Paul Schwartz on the right, my mom, Nessie. And uh, there we are on the street in uh, Camden, New Jersey, Raritan Street in Camden. And this is back in 1950, either four or five. That's my dad and me, kind of my dad hovering over me and me getting a bird's eye view, trying to check out the cloud situation over the Delaware Valley. Back of then. course you were, you right. were always on the move having to check things out. But yeah, it was fun for us. We, we got the chance to, to share our dads uh -huh. at home because you know, it's a, it's a good throwback to have, right? Absolutely, so happy and Father's Day. And our dads Day. have been proud of us. So to Scott and Paul, Happy Father's Day to both of you. And you know, all the other dads out there too, this could be a pretty awesome weekend. Uh, Snap I a great photo I know what you mean. of yeah. you and your dad in the great outdoors. It could be worth $15,000, which if you're anything like my dad, that could be the greatest Father's Day present I could give him of all. Is cash? Well, a great photo N of love, us that won cash. Not love and acceptance. A loving photo of me and my dad 
God, for that one fifty thousand dollars. Faith. Forgiveness. You're ruining this. <laughs> well, I, I already wrote a very long, nice card to oh, get good, that. Good, so, good, but great. head to our website to learn more about that photo contest. You're you know, so bad. All, you get all, me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> all sorts of stormy weather headed to the northeast and southern plains today. And that is news that's always welcome to the drought-plagued areas of the country. In the next hour, you're going to see what infamous weather phenomenon may just bring more moisture to all of that dryness. Wouldn't that be nice? We've had enough dryness. Meanwhile, in D.C., we've had enough wetness, huh? It has been one heck of a gloomy day right up that 95 quarter from the mid-Atlantic into the northeast. Yeah, the flood warning out there, Loudoun County, Frederick County, Maryland, this afternoon. All right, well, this Saturday, join your fellow Americans and join in singing the national anthem in a sing-along from coast to coast. Smithsonian is organizing it for 4 o'clock Eastern. Forecast to get out there. Make sure you warm up your pipes beforehand. You don't want to, you know, alert the neighbors. Looking good in D.C. and San Diego from sea to shining sea. See so what we did there? Yeah, very 71 nice. degrees there. That's See a tie-in, huh? <laughs> Currently in our area, 83 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Tonight, thunderstorms early, low 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, high 86. Here's our seven day outlook. Chris Warren and Kelly Cass, we're here with you for Weather Center Live. And here's what's happening right now. From Dallas to D.C., a string of storms is really lighting up the radar. This round of weather may only be a preview of what's ahead this weekend. From what's happening now to what's happening next, we have expert analysis only the Weather Channel can give you. And Colossal Christina, this Category 4 hurricane picked up a lot of steam in just a little bit of time. What our hurricane specialist has to say about this in just minutes. From the Weather Channel headquarters in Atlanta, this is Weather Center Live. We're talking tropics and severe weather. This right here, a look at where the storms are right now. And you can see throughout parts of Arkansas and the extreme southeast portion of Missouri, Severe thunderstorm warnings currently in effect. Yeah, it looks like the worst of the weather right now over eastern Arkansas. Look at that line currently moving through Jonesboro right now. Also into the boot heel of Missouri. We've had some rough weather in Florida as well. For expert analysis on the severe weather threat tonight, we want to head over to our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes. Hey, Greg. Hey, Kelly. And yeah, we are expecting additional severe weather to become more extensive. Probably Texas may bear the brunt of some of that. Let's take a look. This uh, beginning of this uh, satellite movie here is really around sunrise. Look how there was a big thunderstorm complex there over eastern Oklahoma. It sort of has weakened and broken into two pieces, one in northeast Arkansas, the other down in parts of Texas. It's left over what we call some boundaries. I'll show you that in a minute uh, that will probably influence what happens and where in Texas. Now, as you pointed out, we have a couple severe thunderstorms. That's the very northeast edge of last night's activity, the east edge of it. And there's been some trees down with some of this about an hour until it gets toward the Memphis area, especially to the north and cross Plunsett counties, and then one little bidding bow to the north of that, Dunklin, Green, and per Mississippi counties. Paragool, you've had some uh, trees down with that one. Now, then I mentioned that uh, part of that upper disturbance, that big satellite picture, has pushed uh, down across Texas, and it's left a little bit of a boundary. It's a little cooler to the north of that. The real cold front is back there, so sometimes the storms take over and produce their own cold air. And can you see right in here that these, each one of these little arrows represents the wind, so the true Gulf of Mexico moisture is coming right up to that boundary and colliding. So that may be the places near Austin and Waco and San Angelo 
Peninsula may be where the next round forms. 90s south of that, low 80s north of that. So the storms last night generated their own front. So anywhere from the Memphis area, especially down maybe a little bit into Shreveport, down toward the Houston area, but especially down into the central parts of Texas, probably mostly south of Dallas, will be where I think the biggest of the severe threat will be. In fact, there I've given the torque on a three uh, on a 10 point scale, about a 30% chance of a tornado within 50 miles. Then uh, here's one computer portrayal of how that may involve, evolve as it, well, this actually is uh, what's going on right now. None of these storms are severe, uh, but the computer portrayal will look a lot like that. Some of the storms beginning to pop up over in the east sides of the Houston metro area. None of those severe at the moment, but they could get that way. Here's the computer model. So sort of looks a lot like what we have right now. And watch with time as we head through the evening. Additional storms pop up, not real comprehensive coverage, but they get pretty active there in to the north of Austin, head down toward Houston as we get toward the midnight time frame. So it is going to get stormier. And then for the weekend, an upper disturbance coming into the Pacific Northwest this evening will continue east. That's cold air loft. The lifting ahead of that will trigger some severe storms tomorrow up in the high plains, Montana, the Dakotas, Wyoming. But it's really as we head into Saturday that I think the big severe event is going to take place that upper disturbance gets farther east. The warm, moist air gets all the way up into the northern plains. A low-level jet just above the surface, about 60 miles per hour. So the turning of the winds with height there to give some tornadoes and the mid-level winds also coming in. So South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, you'll have a severe weather threat all through that red shaded area. And I've given a Torcon of five there for southeast Nebraska, north central parts of Kansas, and even some fours there for parts of Iowa and Minnesota. So could be a pretty stormy, dangerous day there on Saturday. Stay safe, everybody. Let's go back to the studio. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Forbes. Right now, a look at Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City. And in spots, once again, another soggy evening for you. You can see some of the low clouds hanging there on the right in New York and the clouds also behind the big buildings in Philadelphia and in the nation's capital. Some of these clouds will bring some rain, some soggy days ahead from parts of the Northeast and a little bit of a warm up we're going to see. A lot of clouds showing up on the visible and radar combination. The white showing us where all the clouds are, the green where the rain is coming out of the clouds. We see a little spin there around the Great Lakes and this is where it's going to be through Friday with that chance for some more rain and potential for some thunderstorms storms throughout parts of the Northeast through tomorrow. And then once that cold front gets through, conditions will improve for you here in the Northeast. Chance for thunderstorms tomorrow and then again on Friday night. Some of the western locations starting to dry out, but still that chance for some rain and some thunderstorms again through Friday night and Saturday. Big difference here. A little bit cooler, a little bit drier, but sunny. Things are going to be looking pretty nice there, lower 80s. And then that warm up will be throughout the entire Northeast. This is why that cool pocket of air that's also helping to bring some of the instability and the showers moves out. Warmer air moves in as that jet stream lifts to the north. So these temperatures are slowly going to warm up and also the humidity is going to come down too once that cold front gets, gets past the Northeast. 60s, 70s, even some 80s around Saturday. And then on Sunday, 70s from Burlington to Boston over in New York City. And then on Monday, you see more orange on the map here, and that is where you're going to have more 80s for afternoon high temperature readings on Monday. Philadelphia, this is how it plays out for you. On average, temperatures in the lower 80s, close to that on Sunday, and then it's going to be hot, Kelly, by Tuesday. Well, what's not hot, the water's in the Pacific, so Christina eventually will hit those cooler waters and eventually weaken, but for now, it's a formidable storm. We've already had Amanda, which was also a major hurricane in the Eastern Pacific. Christina, our second major hurricane in the Eastern Pacific, a record so early in the season. Right now, it is still a Cat 4. Winds are 140 miles per hour. The good news is it's moving away from the coastline, moving toward the west-northwest at about eight miles per hour. Here's a look at visible imagery. You can see clearly an eye right in the center of the storm. It's a beautiful picture. It's beautiful because it's not affecting anybody, and that is the good news. And as I mentioned, it will eventually hit some of those cooler waters over the eastern Pacific. But for now, it's over pretty warm water, kind of not too far off the Mexican coastline, where water temperatures are in the mid-80s. But once you get off to the west of there, you can see the temperatures really get cool and that's going to be like the wall that weakens this storm. So here's a look at Hurricane Christina as we track it in time. You'll see that it will eventually go down to a Cat 3 by midday tomorrow and then weaken further as we go into the weekend. Chris? 
And Kelly, no news is not good news for places dealing with the drought in just minutes. The areas where recent rain could not dent the drought. And how El Nino could bring a little relief to these dangerously dry places dealing with this extreme drought. So our anniversary is coming up and our in-laws have agreed to take care of our kid for a night. So we can finally get some sleep. The hotel has to be right. You can get a four-star hotel for up to 60% off, even at the last minute. In the neighborhood where we want to go? Yes. You just won't know the name until after you book. Hmm. Mm. Definitely. It's all about sleep. Not all about sleep. Well, for me it is. Lucky me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm on it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're covered, Kevin. Thanks, Melinda. Uh, wait, uh, I have blah blah insurance, so person, come help. Hey, Grandma. Dad, look who it is. I see who it is. Six callers ahead of us, Jimmy. You're not helping. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you anytime, anywhere, any way. That's getting to a better state. Faint. We're the angels' natural enemy. It won't be over until they're extinct, or we are. Dominion limited commercial premiere next Thursday at nine, only on Sci-Fi. Right after the season premiere of Defiance. Our area, 83 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Tonight, scattered thunderstorms early, then partly cloudy after midnight. Low, 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy early, scattered thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. High, 87. Here's our seven-day outlook. Weather Channel's new morning show. It all starts with the weather. America's Morning Headquarters with Sam Champion. Weekday mornings at 7, only on the Weather Channel. At Lincoln Financial, we believe you're in charge. <laughs> you're the chief life officer. And this is your annual shareholders meeting. You're overseeing presentations on research and development. And welcoming new members of the team. You're in charge of it all. You just need the right financial solutions to help you along the way. Life, income, retirement, group benefits, and advice. Lincoln Financial, you're in charge. Bonjour. Je t'adore. Here's to a life less routine. The more connected, athletic, seductive Lexus RX. This is the pursuit of perfection. Average. Average sets the treadmill on mosey, or stroll, or loiter. Beat Average with GNC. Discover Brookside and discover an exciting combination of tastes. Rich dark chocolate covering soft centers, flavored with exotic fruit juices. It's chocolate and fruit flavors like you've never experienced before. Discover Brookside. And right now it is time to update you on the drought monitor. Some areas seeing a little bit of improvement. Other areas, it is still very, very bad. Here's a look right now at 
parts of Texas where there has been a little bit of relief in the extreme drought category. That's the red or worse. Last week's at 27%, 23% now, but notice all of the yellow. That's anywhere you have drought. Not much white. White would mean you do not have drought. And so Texas still dealing with it. A little bit of improvements here. Oklahoma, a lot of red on this map as well. The latest is 53%. The last week it was at 61. So that's down a little bit, but there's still a lot of drought in the central part of the US as you look at Texas and Oklahoma. Now in the West, things have been getting worse and in a big way. Three months ago, the severe drought category, 40%. That's the severe drought. Now looking at the extreme drought, that is at 76%. So not only is the drought getting worse, it's getting more intense. And three months ago, that was at 66%. So still dealing with some major drought throughout parts of the West. And now for a closer look at the drought crisis, Alex Wilson and Storm Specialist Dr. Greg Postel break down what lies ahead and how El Nino can play into things. Well, I'm here with our storm specialist, Dr. Greg Postel, because we're talking more about El Nino and the role that many people are hoping it's going to play in relieving some drought conditions. First, though, we got to talk about what exactly El Nino is. Yeah, it can be confusing, and so let's try to straighten it out with a few bullet points here. El Nino really refers to sort of the regional warming of the Pacific Ocean waters that lasts a long time. Months, we're talking about, not days or weeks. And what that can do is actually shift the weather patterns around the world, and that kind of shifting of the weather patterns can be more or less depending on how much warming of the water we actually get. So I think a lot of people tuned in probably to that shifts the patterns yeah. around the world and wondering right. exactly how this warmer ocean water can do that. Right, well the warmer waters kind of move the enhanced areas of thunderstorms around the tropical Pacific and wherever those thunderstorms happen to be they can enhance their uh, outflow associated with them can push the jet stream around a little bit in different ways and when the jet stream is kind of moved around in different ways over the Pacific Ocean ocean, that can have an impact on downstream from there over North America. And this is what the jet stream pattern typically looks like during an El Nino winter. So a lot of people in California are probably looking at this because they've been dealing with terrible drought and they're really hoping that El Nino is going to help them see some of that wet weather. Yeah, it can. Of course, you know, it's no guarantee. It's like the El Nino, what it does, those thunderstorms, they ping the atmosphere and the ripples extend outward from that. So there's a lot of other variability in there that El Nino doesn't account for, but the idea is this kind of tips the scales in favor of a pattern that we're showing here. So the chance perhaps a little better as we go through a typical winter pattern and what we look at. Yeah, so the, with a jet stream moving along like that, with a subtropical jet, one branch of it anyway, and a northern branch coming in like that, that does, as you mentioned, set up for areas that are likely to be wetter than average, in particular in the west in California. That would be great news. Mm -hmm, definitely. That's some of the areas that have seen the worst drought conditions, so they'd love to see a lot of wet weather. They would as well as places in Texas and even in parts of the south. So we can only hope that this sort of pans out because as you said, some places desperately need the rain. That's right. Thank you so much, Dr. Mm -hmm. Postel. Back to you. Thanks, guys. Hurricane Christina remains a very powerful Category 4 hurricane. We'll let you know where it's headed next in your tropical update. That's coming up here on Weather Center Live. And more storms moving across the south tonight. We've got the potential for some damaging winds, possibly even some large hail. We are tracking that severe weather coming up right here on Weather Center Live. Introducing the world's only solar-powered home energy system, which saves you up to half off your heating and cooling bills. Get up to $1,700 back or special financing on select Linux home comfort systems. For more information, contact your local Linux dealer. I typed my name, and Ancestry opened the door to my past. Before my eyes, my family story was revealed. The further I traveled back, the more I discovered. Let Ancestry guide you through the world's largest online collection of family history records. Discover your story today at Ancestry.com. Hershey's Drops. Perfectly bite-sized drops of rich and creamy chocolate happiness. When the chocolate is Hershey's, life is delicious.
20% off Charbroil Commercial Series True Infrared Gas Grills at Lowe's. Awesome. Amazing. That's epic, bro. Whatever happened to good? Good is choosing not to overshoot the moon, but to land right on it. Good is Maxwell House. Good to the last drop. People all over the world know us, but they don't yet know we're a family. We're right where you need us. At the next job, next adventure, or at the next exit. Helping you explore super destinations and do everything under the sun. 12 brands, more hotels than anyone else in the world. So wherever you want to be, whatever you want to do, chances are we're already there. Save up to 25% and earn bonus points when you book at WyndhamRewards.com. Our oath isn't an empty gesture. It isn't sealed with a pinky swear. It's the heart and soul of Terminix Nation. The Terminix Ultimate Protection Guarantee. A promise to destroy every spider, every roach, every foul pest in your home. A promise that is ironclad. 100% satisfaction or your money back. We'll meet them head on with our battle cry. Not here, not now, not in my house. Terminix. The Weather Channel and the American Cancer Society are teaming up to help Relay for Life. Over 4 million Americans are helping to raise awareness and save lives from cancer. Go to RelayForLife.org slash weather and join team. On your mark, get set, win. Visit Isle Casino Pompano Park for your chance to drive off in a BMW 228i. Jump into all the excitement on Saturday, June 28th from 5 to 9 p.m. 20 lucky winners will walk away with $250 in fan play. And at 9 p.m., one great Grand prize winner will take home the incredible new BMW 228i. Receive one free entry every day in June and earn more with play. Buckle up and get ready to win only at Isle Casino Pompano Park. My husband worked at a power plant where the asbestos fell like snow. My dad got uh, mesothelioma from asbestos. Oh, the diagnosis was devastating. We chose Cooney and Conway because they're highly experienced in this area. They were more than lawyers, they were human beings. There was no money up front. It showed my sons that there is justice in the world. Call 1-800-322-5573. Cooney and Conway, justice with a passion. 314-8013. A Weather Channel original series. Every time I shoot a fish and I'm wrestling them, that's when I'm scared. <laughs> Catching Hell, Sundays at 9 on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Tonight, scattered thunderstorms early, then partly cloudy after midnight, low 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy early, scattered thunderstorms developing in the afternoon, high 87. Here's our seven-day outlook. about uh, 20 minutes past the top of the hour time to go in depth with hurricane specialist Michael Lowry because it's time for the tropical update and there is a hurricane in the eastern Pacific. Yeah, strong one at that, Chris. This is uh, Christina, Hurricane Christina, which intensified to a Category 4 hurricane. This is a 36-hour loop, so going back, oh, yesterday morning, and you can see how quickly uh, that storm strengthened, Chris. Notice the, uh, the structure of it and seeing that eye feature pop out during the afternoon hours yesterday. What happened is it increased its in strength from an 80-mile-per-hour hurricane, which is a pretty formidable storm, to 140 mile per hour, 145 mile per hour per hour category four hurricane. So a very, very strong and, hurricane overnight. And this can be hard to predict, right? This type of intensification. It can be. I mean, intensity in general, we'll talk about that more in depth here in a second. Um, but with this storm yesterday, we were noticing that the convection of the thunderstorm is beginning to wrap around the center. I think what happened was we have two circulations. You have one at the surface, you have one at the middle levels of the atmosphere. Those were just
just not quite aligned. When the uh, convection wrapped around the center, those began to align, and that's when the storm really, the bottom dropped out on this thing okay. overnight hours last night. But if you go and look at the forecast models, and this is what Chris was talking about, really none of the models saw this coming. We're go, going back to June 10th now, Chris. So this is two days ago. So if you had to make a forecast for today, there's our today line. These are all the models. This is everything that we have available to tell us how strong the storm might become. I mean, what would your forecast be, Chris? Right, there's point? no reason to go above a cat two. Absolutely there's, not. You can't justify it. So no. I mean, if I was going to make a forecast, I'd say, well, maybe somewhere in here. And that's what the National Hurricane Center did. The official forecast had it down here. This is the what actually happened. So it just went well out of what we call the envelope, the guidance, all of the models that we have. I mean, there are uh, dozens of these that we're looking at, Chris. And, and this is another reason why it is so important to stay with the Weather Channel day after day because things can change, especially in the tropics. It's so difficult. It's out in the ocean. It's so difficult to measure it directly. Yeah, we just don't have the observations yeah. of the open ocean that we do over land. And it's these rapid intensifying storms, these one that quickly spin up. Those are the ones that sort of leave me sleepless at night. But we watch this, and that's why we watch it 24 hours. This is what a rapid intensification is though. A 35 mile per hour wind increase in 24 hours. They're very, very difficult to forecast. Intensity is bad enough. When they quickly, quickly spin up, they're even more difficult to forecast, but it's not unusual. One in three storms undergo rapid intensification. But Chris, this is the scary statistic. Almost all of our category four and five hurricanes undergo rapid intensification. So if you have one of these things that's just sitting off the coast, it looks like it might spin up. I mean, you can go from a category one hurricane to a category four hurricane in 12 hours. When it's really close to landfall, and that is scary. That is said. the scary yeah. thing. Yeah, and so this is sort of looking at that skill in the intensity forecast. Let's let's talk a little bit about what we mean with skill, though. So if I had to give you a forecast for temperature for tomorrow, I could give you the average temperature, right? All right, but that's really not a skillful forecast. Anyone can go and look up averages. What's the average high or the average low? What we do though is we use the models to come up with a forecast. If we add value to that forecast above what you would get by just looking at the historical data, then it's a skillful forecast. Now out to three days, our models have some relative skill. Beyond that though, they're not really skillful in telling us how intense. And that's intensity. You have a better idea where the storm's going. Not the intensity. But how strong it's going to be once it gets there is right. what's really difficult. Well, and this is the positive thing, is that even though we're struggling with the intensity, Chris, the average forecast track errors have been cut in half uh, for the 48-hour track forecast in the past 20 years. So we've made strides here on the, on the track, but a long way to go on intensity. All right, Hurricane Specialist Michael Lowry, thank you. Let's go back to Kelly in the studio. All right, thanks guys. Going nowhere fast. New York City is just one of the big cities seeing travel trouble from storms and some rain in the area. We're going to take a closer look at some of those flight delays and how long they should last. That's coming up. Plus, we've got a special anniversary happening in D.C. The Smithsonian is celebrating its 200th anniversary. And there's a look at the forecast for this Saturday, which happens to be Flag Day. And uh, show your red, white, and blue in support. Sunshine, 81 degrees. So it looks like a beautiful day for all the festivities going on there in our nation's capital. We'll be right back. Haven't we always wanted our own island? One without car horns or stoplights, but one filled with forts and uncharted paths, carriage rides and bike rides, and games we play all day where the sun can't wait to wake up and adventure waits around every corner. Nestled in the deep blue waters of Lake Huron, our island is Mackinac Island. Our island is pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. Today is a nice day to enjoy a stroll down Mackinac Island's one-of-a-kind Main Street. Fruit with a cool finish. Fruit on one side, cool on the other. Icebreakers Duo, a fruity cool way to break the ice. She keeps you on your toes. You wouldn't have it any other way. But your erectile dysfunction? It could be a question of blood flow. Cialis Tadalafil for daily use helps you be ready anytime the moment's right. You can be more confident in your ability to be ready. And the same Cialis is the only daily ED tablet approved to treat ED and symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently or urgently. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. 
If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or any allergic reactions like rash, hives, swelling of the lips, tongue, or throat, or difficulty breathing or swallowing, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about experiencing Cialis for daily use and a free 30-tablet trial. It says here that a woman's sex drive increases at the age of 80. Helps reduce the risk of heart disease. Keep heart healthy. Live long. Eat the 100% goodness of post-shredded wheat. Doctors recommend it. At Farmers, we make you smarter about auto insurance because the more you know, the more we can help you. Cut. Lower. Shave. Cut and drop your insurance rates. If you want to save hundreds, talk to farmers. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. The more you know, the more you could save. Farmers could help you save hundreds on your auto insurance. Call your local agent or 1-800-470-8496 today. Stanley Steamer Carpet Cleaning is certified by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America for a cleaner, healthier home. Call about our $99 carpet cleaning special. Call 1-800-STEAMER. Stanley Steamer, your certified cleaner. Tempur-Pedic owners say we've transformed their sleep. And now, Tempur-Pedic just got even better. With new covers that are easy to remove and machine wash and a cool-to-the-touch feel. Visit TempurPedic.com to transform your sleep today. The Weather Channel and the American Cancer Society are teaming up to help Relay for Life. Over 4 million Americans are helping to raise awareness and save lives from cancer. Go to RelayForLife.org slash weather and join teams across America. Together, we can end cancer one step at a time. Go to RelayForLife.org slash weather for more info. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Tonight, scattered thunderstorms early. Then partly cloudy after midnight, low 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy early, scattered thunderstorms developing in the afternoon, high 87. Here's our seven-day outlook. Series. This is a dangerous job. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Catching Hell, Sundays at 9 on the Weather Channel. Hey, everybody, check out this new picture just Ooh. into the Weather Channel. Look at the damage here. Those are two by fours piercing the roof of this home in Russell, Spring, Russell Springs, Kansas. The National Weather Service did confirm that there was actually an EF1 tornado that hit the area last night. And some weird things like that can happen with tornadoes where, you know, some areas are not touched at all and you get something like that. Look at the splinters coming out of the top of that house. Wow, amazing. And then there's this, uh, signs of severe weather, the tornadoes, the rain, the hail, and supercells. That's right. We've seen a lot of them over the past few days and we could even see more before before all is said and done and from the area seeing storms right now to what's coming next we've got you covered with expert analysis only the weather channel can give you that's right i'm chris warren with kelly cass and we are here with you for weather center live let's get straight to our severe weather expert dr greg forbes for a check on where storms are firing right now hey dr forbes well we have a newly issued tornado watch actually for parts of central texas that goes until midnight we'll show you the graphic for that coming up uh, but we have uh, ongoing storms beginning to fire up in texas and they're continuing to fire up in uh, northeast parts of Arkansas. Look what happened though around sunrise. You see that big cluster of thunderstorms here in the satellite imagery, the highest tops in red. Those original ones have sort of dissipated, but the atmosphere has a memory and sort of out on the edges of where things leave off, that's where new storms often fire and that's where they have fired today off in parts of northeast Arkansas. We have Crittenden Cross and Ponset counties with severe thunderstorm warning. And that's uh, and there's been some trees down in the Paragould, also some flash flooding in there from the long duration of that big storm cluster are coming in. It's probably going to just miss about a half hour from now the north part of Memphis, but it hit places like Drummond's and Arlington. You see in the white area there, a box there, some of the timeline for that. So certainly some of the northern parts of Memphis area will get hit. 
down into southern Arkansas, Cleveland, Dallas counties, a little bit more isolated severe thunderstorm. Here's the situation. Those storms are out well ahead of the cold front. Right on the cold front here in blue, uh, there's the, a new storm is fired up and it probably will slide south and east along this. You see this black dotted line, dashed line? That's the southern end of where those thunderstorms were overnight. And the reason that's important is that really the thunderstorms that came down overnight cooled the temperatures down into the low 80s south of that boundary as we call it. Gulf of Mexico moisture pouring in and it's in the 90s so the storms created their own little frontal zone and mostly in there in central Texas that's where the worst of the severe is going to be a little bit of a threat as we've seen elsewhere so I'm thinking a Torcon of at least three into this area at least a 30 percent chance of a tornado within 50 miles probably a couple tornadoes there pretty widely spaced I'm hoping maybe turning into lines overnight that will head all the way down to the Houston area right now Haskell County Jones and Shackelford counties the first of the storms in Texas off to the north of Abilene you can see they're drifting south and east. Down near the sea breeze front, the cooler air from the ocean that's come in, uh, we have a few thunderstorms not severe popping up and not moving very fast off to the east of the Houston area. So we'll fill in in between. For the weekend though, it's this next weather system. Cold pocket aloft, the upper low there, you see the winds go parallel to these white lines. So that's where the jet stream comes in. By tomorrow, that will give some severe weather in Montana, the Dakotas, and Wyoming. But the real severe threat, I think, is going to be when things get a little bit more Gulf of Mexico moisture on Saturday. Comes all the way up into the northern plains. A low-level jet of about 5,000 feet, 60 miles per hour, gives a turning of the winds with height for some tornadoes there. And the mid-level winds, 20,000 feet, also come into the area. So you see there that Kansas, Nebraska area, a lot of things coming together uh, all the way up into the Dakotas and Minnesota as well. I've given a Torcon of five, in fact, for north central, northeast parts of Kansas, uh, southeast parts of Nebraska there. That's a 50% chance within 50 miles. And for parts of western Minnesota and Iowa, a Torcon of four. So a little bit farther east than on Sunday. So it is going to be a stormy weekend as a new weather system pushes into the northern and central plains. I hope everybody stays safe and has a happy Father's Day. Let's go to Kelly. All right, thanks so much, Greg. You know, unfortunately, we are dealing with some big travel troubles, especially in the Northeast. A lot of airports looking at delays with the clouds and the rain around. Even down towards Atlanta, we're keeping a close eye with those storms not too far away and back towards the Big D. Of course, we do have that new tornado watch that Greg was just talking about in the middle of Texas. So here's a look at where we do have the rain coming down. We've had some flooding issues as well in the western parts of Maryland. So keep that in mind if you're doing any traveling on the interstate. But uh, again, at the airports, definitely check ahead if you're expecting a loved one anytime soon. We've got some major delays, including Newark, averaging over two hours right now. Also, we're looking at some of those delays in Boston with over an hour delay for you and Philadelphia averaging about 50 minutes right now. And yes, you can blame all this on the weather. Lots of clouds and rain in the area. There's a look at Baltimore. Closer look at the radar showing some of that heavy rain on the north side of town. Just light rain being reported right at the airport and the winds are not too bad. But again, just enough that we have some problems with the airport seeing delays of about an hour and 45 minutes. Also watching places like Dulles. We've got right now mostly cloudy skies. The winds are pretty gusty though. They're gusting over 20 miles per hour, making for a little bit of a bumpy ride and also a ground stop in effect here as well. So definitely check ahead. Chris, over to you. All right, Kelly, thank you very much. Definitely check ahead with the weather before you're heading out because this is a scene here in Atlanta where you, you, know, you can have what looks like uh, some pretty nice weather, some clouds off into the distance, and all of a sudden, just like that, you have some showers rolling through, and that's what we say is being unsettled. It's nice, but you know what? Heads up because at times you could have some very heavy rain like you've seen the past couple of days, and like we're seeing right now just outside of Memphis and north of town, severe thunderstorm warning currently in effect. Just kind of giving you the big picture of what's going on. And then you have the very hit and miss storms that can pop up around Atlanta and throughout parts of South Carolina, North Carolina, where there are a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings currently in effect. This is where it is going to stay unsettled tomorrow with some scattered thunderstorms. And then again on Saturday, still that threat for some storms on and off throughout the day and into the weekend. Father's Day also going to have that chance for some scattered thunderstorms. This goes from New Orleans over to Charlotte and throughout the peninsula throughout Florida and tomorrow we're going to see uh, that uh, the showers and the thunderstorms again hanging around. That's what we're dealing with again kind of to recap and what's going on throughout the weekend. You're going to have that chance for some storms again that's going to last through the weekend on and off a hit and miss situation for you in Atlanta. Here it is. Temperatures are going to stay warm even during the overnight hours down into the 60s. That's it back into the mid 80s with a chance for some storms 
tomorrow and then again throughout the weekend. But again, you go outside and for a while, Things are looking pretty nice, could have a little bit of sunshine, but keep in mind you do need to hang on to uh, the umbrellas and know when to go inside. Also in Florida, lightning, potentially dangerous situation. Again, that chance for storms lasting through much of the weekend. Kelly? Well, Chris, today is a warmer day in Chicago compared to the 67 we saw yesterday, half an inch of rain. You know, the clouds and rain will do that to you, but your average should be right around 78 degrees, and we're definitely more in that ballpark today. Speaking of ballpark, we got the White Sox at home this evening, and the White Sox will continue to be home throughout the weekend as well. So let's check out the forecast and see if we have any warmer days in your future because the temperatures this time of year tend to go up and down. This is, of course, a transition time as we lead into summertime. St. Louis right now. Now we've got 79 degrees in cloudy skies, a little bit of a wind out there, but still all in all, not a bad afternoon in many of these places like Des Moines. You've got 76 degrees, 82 by the water here in Louisville, 79 degrees in Indianapolis and 78, as I mentioned, in Chicago. So here's a look at where we're going to be tomorrow. We're going to be a little bit below average in some cases, but then Saturday on into Sunday, Father's Day, we're going to warm things up for you. How about the low 80s around St. Louis, maybe heading out to Six Flags. Good day for the water rise, even Sunday. Father's Day looks good for that as well. 83 degrees at Navy at Navy Pier in Chicago and over towards Cincinnati. We've got those highs getting very close to 90 degrees. So that cooler air is retreating up to the north. We've got the warmer air coming back at us with a southwesterly flow. That means places like St. Louis and Kansas City, also Springfield, Illinois, and even Columbus, Ohio. You're looking at temperatures running above average for this time of the year. So St. Louis, your average high, 84 degrees. We're going to be below that tomorrow, slightly below that on Saturday. Then the temperatures take off on Sunday. And then look at that by Tuesday, we could be looking at 90 degrees. Chris? Kelly, marking milestones. And there he goes. Up next, why former President H.W. Bush was flying high above the earth today. And Father's Day, just three days away. If you're thinking of taking Dad to the big easy to celebrate, we're going to have your weekend forecast straight ahead. Currently in our area, 82 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, scattered thunderstorms early then partly cloudy after midnight. Low, 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy early. Scattered thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. High, 87. Here's our seven-day outlook. A beauty revolution. Radiance. The new paint studio at 8. Oh, snap. Featuring the number one rated label in semi-gloss paint, Clark and Kensington. That's longhand for awesome. Ace is a place to help the hardware folks. Helpful is beautiful. For the dad that would do anything for golf, save on anything for golf at the Golfsmith Father's Day event. The biggest savings, the best deals. To make this the best Father's Day yet. So hurry to Golfsmith. Anything for golf. the deliciousness of Hershey's syrup. Squeeze, stir, share. Boring! Yeah. If you want to see your faithful, be such a couch potato. Yeah, just go check out the thing for yourself. Hi, lad. I ain't got no room for boring. There's burning, there's burning, burning. No, we ain't got no room for boring. For boring, we ain't got no the 2014 Highlander. Toyota. Let's go places! Would you consider a four-star hotel that's up to 60% off? Just can't know the name. Just no name? Until you book. Um, yeah, I'd do that.
Lincoln Financial, we believe you're the boss of your life, the chief life officer, in charge of providing for loved ones, growing your nest egg, and protecting what matters most. Ask your financial advisor how Lincoln Financial can help you take charge of your future. Life, income, retirement, group benefits, and advice. Lincoln Financial, you're in charge. I forgot to work out. Average has memory issues. I forgot to work out. I work out. And memory issues. Beat Average with GNC. Do you have something for pain? I have Bayer Aspirin. I'm not having a heart attack. It's, uh, it's my back. I mean Bayer Back and Body. It works great for pain. Bayer Back and Body provides effective relief for your tough pain. Better? Yeah. Thanks for the tip. And this is Hurricane Central, and right now, live from space, the International Space Station flying over or near Hurricane Christina. It's hard to, to pick it out, but we do see a lot of white there, a lot of clouds. Can you see it? Kel, do you see it? Yeah, I see it. It's on the left there? Mm-hmm. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Very cool. All right, now let's get back into the atmosphere. President George H.W. Bush parachutes over at Kitty Buckport, Maine to celebrate his 90th birthday. He also celebrated his 75th, his 80th, and his 85th birthdays with jumps. Landing was successful once again. And maybe you're going to spend Father's Day weekend watching a little golf. The U.S. Open. Things are in full swing at Pinehurst, North Carolina. Phil Mickelson is off to a solid start in his effort to snag a win. The six-time runner-up is tied at 23rd with a lot of holes left to play. So good luck to Phil there. And this is a look at the forecast for tomorrow. By the afternoon here in North Carolina, there will be a chance for some thunderstorms. It's going to be hit and miss. So they have the crews there. They'll be watching their radar, watching the conditions change. And then for, I know my dad is likely to be on the couch on Sunday watching uh, the final round there of the U.S. Open, Pinehurst, uh, North Carolina. Uh, things are looking the best, I think, on Saturday there, that part of North Carolina. And your Father's Day forecast, uh, this is uh, what we're looking at. And these are some of the cities where a lot of people uh, will be uh, likely celebrating or at least enjoying Father's Day. Right now, things looking good, at least some sunshine. New Orleans, Los Angeles, and Denver. Uh, New York. Seeing the clouds, though, right now. Now we're going to take a look at that Father's Day forecast, and we're going to start off with a look at the Pacific Northwest, where there's going to be a chance for some showers on Sunday, and not a bad day to stay inside and watch the U.S. Open on TV. And on Sunday, a chance for some showers and some storms for your Father's Day in Minneapolis, uh, down into uh, most of Missouri and in the Northeast. Once the storms that we're seeing uh, right here and tomorrow, Get out of here, and they'll be long gone by Sunday, so conditions will improve. It won't look like it does right now in New York City. And in Seattle, chance for some morning showers on Saturday. A few showers hanging around on Sunday. And Minneapolis, chance for some thunderstorms hit and miss. Temperatures going to be pleasant, though, into the mid-70s and pretty warm in the morning as well. For Boston, Father's Day is looking better than Saturday. A chance for some showers in Boston over the weekend. But again, it's going to be on Saturday. Kelly? Thanks, Chris. It's time now for our top five. We're going to take a look at some of the amazing weather videos from around the world, even out of this world. As we start things off with number five, you know, fans around the world are tuning yeah. into the World Cup in 20, uh, 2014. The astronauts, they're cheering from space. This crew sent down a special special message to wish good luck to all the players and the teams. They were even having some fun kicking the little ball around. A cute little soccer ball. Very tiny. 
Well, you don't want it to be much bigger than that or you could get hurt, right? Number four, severe storms in Russell, Kansas last night. There were several reports of tornadoes and strong winds and some large hail. We did have some damage with some of those storms as well. Number three, quarter size hail. This was from last night in Britain, South Dakota. In addition to a developing wall cloud, we also saw some cooler air in the wake of those storms. We had some fog and, of course, plenty of rain. Number two, a huge supercell. This in Burlington, Colorado from last night. We had tornado warnings at the same time, some pretty strong winds and hail as well. Some storm chasers out there capturing some of the video. And number one, thunderstorms sweeping through Pennsylvania last night. We had some pouring rain out there. Not only that, a large funnel cloud forming right over a Greensburg shopping center. Fortunately, no word of any damage with that. Well, you can upload your videos anytime at weather.com slash photos. Chris? And Kelly Christina, now a strong Category 4 hurricane coming up next in the Tropical Update. A look at the storm's path and whether it will impact land. And if a hurricane hits your hometown, do you know what to do and where to go? We're testing your hurricane IQ as we study evacuation zones. That's coming up next. And right now, let's take a live look at Norfolk, Virginia here. And it looks like we do have some clouds here in this part of Virginia as we're looking off into the distance. Some dark skies, still a chance for some showers like we are seeing throughout parts of the southeast all the way up to the northeast. We are keeping you ahead of the storms right here on Weather Center Live. Stay with us for the, the tropical update that's coming up next. Anna. Ready. Now every stop is an opportunity to save gas. And maybe someone's day. Introducing the new fuel-efficient 2014 Malibu with stop-start technology. The car for the richest guys on earth. Start your summer off right and get $2,000 customer cash on every 2014 Chevy Malibu. As a commercial beekeeper, Dave tracks the Weather Channel forecast closely, predicting when crops across the country will bloom and need bees for pollination. At a moment's notice, he loads and trucks thousands of bees, keeping his eye on the weather to ensure his fragile cargo makes it to the blooms on time. When the bees and blooms matter, Dave turns to the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 82 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, scattered thunderstorms early then partly cloudy after midnight, low 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy early, scattered thunderstorms developing in the afternoon, high 87. Here's our seven day outlook. The sun has always powered life, and now it powers our latest innovation to heat and cool your home more efficiently. Introducing the world's only solar-powered home energy system, which saves you up to half off your heating and cooling bill. Get up to $1,700 back or special financing on select Lennox Home Comfort Systems. Lennox. Innovation never felt so good. For more information, contact your local Lennox dealer. Introducing Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofing Stain. The seal just got better. With stain and sealer in one and easy to choose colors, exceptional beauty and protection have never been easier. New Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofing Stain, exclusively at the Home Depot. Introducing Thompson's new line of waterproofing stains. Easy to choose, easy to use. People all over the world know us, but they don't yet know we're a family. We're right where you need us. At the next job, 
next adventure, or at the next exit. Helping you explore super destinations and do everything under the sun. 12 brands, more hotels than anyone else in the world. So wherever you want to be, whatever you want to do, chances are we're already there. Save up to 25% and earn bonus points when you book at WyndhamRewards.com. Tyler Perry's The Haves and The Have-Nots is sizzling red hot. We have arrested Wyatt Cryer. Coming after you next. No! All new episodes, Tuesdays, 9, 8 central, only here. And keep up with a full season anytime with Xfinity. Every new episode is available the next day. Watch now with Xfinity On Demand. Your Xfinity Internet is getting faster again. Xfinity is doubling Internet speeds for customers in its most popular double and triple play packages for no additional cost. That means our new basic speed of up to 50 megabits per second will be faster than any speed Uverse can offer you. Don't fall for Uverse. Only Xfinity delivers the fastest and most reliable Internet. Call 1-800-XFINITY to upgrade to a great X1 double or triple play offer. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Caused by exposure to asbestos, call 1-800-278-0768 now. America's Morning Headquarters with Sam Champion. Not just a morning forecast, a morning show. AMHQ with Sam Champion, the Weather Channel's brand new morning show. The Atlantic hasn't seen any action so far this hurricane season, but a totally different story in the eastern Pacific. Our hurricane specialist, Michael Lowry, is keeping tabs on the tropics, and he's going to talk now about a very powerful hurricane. Christina, hey, Michael. Hey, Kelly, that's right. This is our second now Category 4 hurricane. This hurricane season alone in the eastern Pacific, and we've only been in the hurricane season a month, less than a month in the eastern Pacific. This is Hurricane Christina. The latest numbers from the National Hurricane Center have it still as a 140 mile per hour Category 4 hurricane. Hurricane. Now, those winds yesterday when I spoke to you were 80 miles per hour. So overnight in about 12 hours, it strengthened about 65 miles per hour, something that we call rapid intensification quickly, quickly overnight. Moving toward the west, northwest under this area of high pressure, kind of weak mid-level area of high pressure, steering it slowly to the west. But that is the good news, though, is that westward course in that fortunately is going to keep it away from Mexico. Let's take a look at our visible satellite picture and this is a very classic textbook shaped hurricane. You can see a circular appearance to it with that donut shaped eye right smack in the middle. The strongest storms, the worst of the weather just outside of the eye in an area that we call the eye wall. The hurricane force winds only extending about 15 miles on either side of that eye. So a very small storm. Those thunderstorms though as they grow up into the atmosphere they're sinking on either side of it. That is what creates the ice, what drops or dries out the middle of the storm. Zooming out, you can see how small it is relative to Mexico. Pretty good appearance. Outflow, the exhaust on either side of it. Um, you know, not really anything working against it. The only thing you can see uh, that's sort of not what you would expect to see in the strongest of our storms is a bit of an erosion here on the southwest side of it. I think that could be due to some drier mid-level air. I want to show you our water vapor picture. This is the amount of water content at the upper levels of the atmosphere. So here we're looking about 20 or 30,000 feet up. When I talk about mid-level dry air, I'm talking about 10,000 feet up. So we're not seeing all of that in this picture, but you can sort of see the bronze colors. That's the drier air starting to filter down. And when the winds orient in a certain way, you can kind of punch some of that dry air into the system. And I think that's what might be happening. But regardless, I do expect a weakening trend. But look at this, guys. The water temperature is near 90 degrees that it's been working with over the past few days. But ahead of it, starting to drop off into the 70s, and that is where it's headed. The forecast from the National Hurricane Center uh, taking it off toward the west-northwest by the time we get into this weekend, moving it over those cooler waters and also those upper-level winds starting to increase. So we do expect that this will weaken as we get into the weekend, moving away from Mexico. So good news there. Let's go to the Atlantic really quickly. Water temperatures there, plenty warm enough in the 80s. It doesn't take 90-degree water temperatures to get a hurricane. 90% of our hurricanes form over water temperatures of 80 degrees or warmer. What's absolutely 
absent though is clouds. We just don't have any clouds in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Western Caribbean. Those are the preferred areas and notice the winds that are streaming, pushing these clouds from west to east. It's those strong winds, Chris and Kelly, that will prevent any tropical development in the Atlantic through at least Sunday. Back to you. Michael Lowry, thank you very much. And many hurricane evacuation zones have changed over the past few years. And if you are ever asked to evacuate ahead of a storm, make sure you take it seriously and you do it. Absolutely. Senior Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross is making sure you have the information you need to make the best plan for you and your family. Hurricane evacuations. Highways are jammed in the rush to get out. Confusion about who should and shouldn't evacuate adds to the chaos. So the question you might ask, am I in an evacuation zone? Just because you weren't in an evacuation zone last year doesn't mean that new technology hasn't changed the boundaries. And some of the changes are big. For example, both New York City and Miami-Dade County have updated their evacuation maps, adding nearly 2 million people. More cities will soon follow suit. That's because big storms can alter the topography of the shoreline, and new technology allows better measurements of the height of the ground. It's done with an airborne mapping system called LIDAR, essentially a radar system using a laser. The result is a very accurate mapping of the seafloor, the shoreline, and the areas that the storm surge might flood. So remember, evacuation zones can change. Make sure to check with your town or the Office of Emergency Management. Listen for updates from local officials. And be ready if the evacuation order comes if you live in an evacuation zone. Meanwhile, a soggy mess in the Northeast. And New York, more rain and storms for you. Will it move out just in time for your weekend? We'll have the answers for you coming up at the top of the hour. Weather Center Live is back right after your local on the 8th. Currently in our area, 81 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, scattered thunderstorms early. Then partly cloudy after midnight, low 73. Chance of rain, 50%. Friday, partly cloudy early, scattered thunderstorms developing in the afternoon, high 87. Here's our seven-day outlook. Chris Warren with Kelly Cass. We're here with you for Weather Center Live. And here's what's happening right now from Dallas to D.C. A string of storms lighting up the radar. This round of weather may only be a preview of what's ahead this weekend. From what's happening now to what's happening next, we have expert analysis only the Weather Channel can give you. And Colossal Christina, this Category 4 hurricane picked up a lot of steam in a little bit of time. What our hurricane specialist has to say about this in just minutes. From the Weather Channel headquarters in Atlanta, Anna, this is Weather Center Live. And right now, a tornado watch to tell you about until midnight tonight, central time throughout parts of central and parts of southern Texas right now. This does include Austin. Yeah, San Angelo, and you can see a couple of warnings out there. No tornado warnings. Those are actual severe thunderstorm warnings. Dallas, we've had some showers in and around your area, and we're seeing some airport delays as a result. Now, for expert analysis of the severe weather threat tonight, we went ahead over to Dr. Greg Forbes. Hey, Greg. Hey, Kelly, and some of the tornado watch area is actually related to where 
where the storms left off last night. We, we sometimes call that the atmosphere having a memory. Take a look. Here's what I'm talking about. You see there at the very beginning of this movie, we had all sorts of high top thunderstorms, the red top ones there in Oklahoma. Now that they've dissipated, but out on the east edge and on the south edge, that's where the storms are firing up today. A lot of that memory has to do with clouds and rain that cooled some of the area and out where they didn't occur. That's where we're getting the storms today. And off on the northeast edge of that, we have a storm that has produced a 71 mile per hour gust that Mark Tree in Ponset County, Arkansas, peeled a roof back in Cross County. And that's very close to Memphis. It's going to go across the north suburbs of Memphis, Crittenden, Mississippi, Tipton counties. You're under severe thunderstorm warning. Gusts likely to be in places over 60 miles per hour. And I've timed that out. Uh, coming into Bartlett area, that's part of the north suburbs of, of Memphis, 520 up towards the Brownsville area, 546. So watch out for damaging winds, maybe some hail up to one inch in diameter and some street flooding. Then farther to the south, these storms have downed some trees. Cleveland, Jefferson County, watch out down to the south of Pine Bluff for those storms. Now, those storms are out there, out way ahead of where the blue cold front is. The black dash line, that's the south edge of some of that rain cooled air from last night's storms that I talked about. Where those are intersecting, we have a brand new severe thunderstorm warning up there in uh, northwest parts of Texas and uh, here is part of that memory of the atmosphere that I was talking about. See here where the winds coming in from the south and east off the Gulf of Mexico. They're in the 90s, even some places in the hundreds, and all of a sudden they collide there in 80s to the north of that. So the thunderstorms last night left their own front, and that's where this lead storm is, is firing. Haskell, Jones, Shackleford counties off to the north of Abilene. Could be some golf balls high as hail with that. And then uh, down uh, north and west of Kerrville, Kimball County. Storms just firing up. They'll likely increase in coverage between there and Houston. The sea breeze, a little bit cooler air coming in from the south and east has fired up some storms not moving very fast and not severe between Beaumont and Houston. The severe threat mostly over in the east side and then down into the Texas area in the red area here. Hail damaging winds, isolated tornadoes. I've given a torque on a three there, 30% chance of a tornado within 50 miles. I think there'll be a few tornadoes, probably not widespread in that tornado watch area. Then as we head into the weekend, it'll be a different weather system. This upper low that is uh, the winds follow these white lines, cold pocket loft will be working its way towards some Gulf of Mexico moisture. Maybe not quite getting all of it tomorrow, but by Saturday and Sunday, it should have quite a bit. Tomorrow, spotty severe thunderstorms, parts of Montana, Wyoming, the western Dakotas, hail, damage winds, low chance of a tornado, but by Saturday, that Gulf of Mexico moisture gets all the way up into parts of the northern plains. Rich moisture, that's the fuel for the thunderstorms. Warm temperatures at about 5,000 feet. The winds in a low-level jet might be 60 miles per hour, more from the southwest. So that kind of turning of the atmosphere winds there allows the atmosphere to roll and develop those supercell thunderstorms that generate tornadoes. Mid-level winds, 20,000 feet, also come in pretty fast. So watch out in places like Kansas, Nebraska, all the way up into Minnesota and the Dakotas and a Torcon of five that I've given there in parts of Nebraska and parts of Kansas. So, Chris, a uh, pretty stormy weekend lies ahead. All right, Dr. Forbes, thank you very much. Also a chance for some storms in these areas where it's cloudy right now, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City. Going to see in places, soggy evening, stormy days still to deal with in the Northeast before things warm up and dry out. Right now, this is a look at where the clouds and the rain currently located throughout the Great Lakes over to the northeast. The white, those are the clouds, the visible satellite, and the green, that's showing the, the radar where it is wet. There's also going to be a chance for some thunderstorms. You have the regular old rain, but also some of these storms could come with some lightning. This is through tomorrow, and then eventually through Saturday, we're going to watch this move out. Tomorrow, the forecast, scattered thunderstorms throughout the northeast, New England included in this, right through Friday night. And you're starting to see a little bit of drying behind it once that cold front gets through. We're going to have drier conditions and then warmer air is going to move into the picture. Washington, D.C., that chance for storms goes away by Saturday with lower 80s expected. And then things are going to warm up. Temperatures warming up for the weekend. Late week, that cool pocket of air with that dip in the jet stream is going to move out of here. The jet stream moving to the north. Jet stream generally separates the cooler air from the warmer air. So that warmer air now in place this weekend. And that's why things are going to be feeling and looking much nicer. That is, of course, if you like the sunshine and the drier conditions with a little bit lower humidity. Upper 70s in New York by Father's Day, mid 80s in Washington, D.C., and then upper 80s close to 90 in D.C. come Monday. Well, it'll be 20, about 10 degrees cooler in Boston at 79. 
And Philadelphia, your average high this time of year. So typically what you might expect if you're planning a trip to Philadelphia is 82 degrees. You're going to see close to that on Sunday and Monday. And then it heats up closer to 90 in Philly on Tuesday. Kelly? Thanks, Chris. It's time to track the tropics, and I'm happy to say the Atlantic Basin pretty quiet. And even though we do have a powerful hurricane in the eastern Pacific, this one not impacting anybody either. It's moving away from the Mexican coastline, but it is a very powerful hurricane. In fact, our second Category 4 of the season so far in the East Pack, and our season just began on May 15th. Winds are 140 miles per hour. Pressure pretty low. It's moving toward the west-northwest at about 8 miles per hour, but that is key. West-northwest takes it away from Mexico. And there it is, a beautiful visible satellite imagery, maybe starting to encounter some of that drier air just off to the west of the system. But more importantly, it will eventually encounter some cooler Pacific water because right now the water temperatures where the storm rapidly intensified near 90 degrees. Right now it's about 86 degrees where it's located. And then as you can see, the temperatures really cool off the more it gets away from the Mexican coastline and that cooler water will eventually weaken this system. So good news here. You can track Christina as we head through the next couple of days is weakening to a category three by the middle of tomorrow and then over the weekend weakening further becoming probably just a depression or remnant low by early next week. Chris. Kelly, we know no news is not good news for places that are dealing with the drought. In just minutes, the areas where recent rain couldn't dent the drought and how El Nino could bring a little relief to these dangerously dry cities. a deadline. Will I get there in time? Am I going too fast? Did I close the garage door? Stay in your lane. I don't think I sent that email. I should make a reservation. I thought it was clear. Okay, break. I didn't see that coming. Its instinct to protect leaves you free to drive. Lease the Infiniti Q50 for $369 a month. Thunder Dragons. It's time to get a hotel. Hey, Razor, check this out. We can save big with Priceline Express deals. You know what, man? These guys ain't no dragons. They're cool. These deals are legit. Hey, we're cool. She's cool. We're cool. It's the candy bar that's too hot for TV in all its naked glory. Stripped of chocolate with nothing but salty roasted peanuts on soft, sweet caramel. A payday bar will get you through your day. Expose yourself to payday. Weekdays on the Weather Channel, it all starts with the weather. AMHQ. America's Morning Headquarters with Sam Champion. The Weather Channel's new morning show. Not just a morning forecast, a morning show. AMHQ with Sam Champion. Weekday mornings at 7, only on the Weather Channel. It all starts with the weather. Currently in our area, 81 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, thunderstorms early, low 73. Chance of rain, 80%. Friday, partly cloudy with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, high 87. Here's our seven day outlook. Series. Every time I shoot a fish and I'm wrestling them, that's when I'm scared. Catching Hell, Sundays at 9 on the Weather Channel. If you've got COPD like me, hey, breathing's hard. Know the feeling? COPD includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Spiriva is a once daily inhaled COPD maintenance treatment that helps open my obstructed airways for a full 24 hours. 
Spiriva helps me breathe easier. Spiriva Handy Haler Teotropium Bromide Inhalation Powder does not replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms. Tell your doctor if you have kidney problems, glaucoma, trouble urinating, or an enlarged prostate. These may worsen with Spiriva. Discuss all medicines you take, even eye drops. Stop taking Spiriva and seek immediate medical help if your breathing suddenly worsens, your throat or tongue swells, you get hives, vision changes, or eye pain, or problems passing urine. Other side effects include dry mouth and constipation. Nothing can reverse COPD. Spiriva helps me breathe better. Does breathing with COPD weigh you down? Don't wait to ask your doctor about Spiriva. At Lincoln Financial, we believe you're in charge. You're the chief life officer. And this is your annual shareholders meeting. You're overseeing presentations on research and development. And welcoming new members of the team. You're in charge of it all. You just need the right financial solutions to help you along the way. Life, income, retirement, group benefits, and advice. Lincoln Financial. You're in charge. For the dad that would do anything for golf, save on anything for golf at the Golfsmith Father's Day event. The biggest savings, the best deals. To make this the best Father's Day yet. So hurry to Golfsmith. Anything for golf. Right now, time to update you on the drought monitor, showing where some areas have had a little bit of improvement with some recent rain, and other areas not so much. In Texas, last week, 27% in extreme drought. This week, 23%. And for Oklahoma, last week was 61 and 53% in extreme drought. But look how much of the state is still in drought. This is some big-time drought here throughout the central U.S., including uh, Oklahoma and Texas here, uh, down a few percentage points here. Otherwise, the West, it has been getting very, very bad, especially in California. Look at all of the red there, but severe drought in yellow three months ago was at 40%. And as far as the extreme drought goes, it went from 66 to 77% of California. Now for a closer look at the drought crisis, Alex Wilson, a storm specialist, Dr. Greg Postel, break down what lies ahead for these areas and how El Nino could play into it all. Well, I'm here with our storm specialist, Dr. Greg Postel, because we're talking more about El Nino and the role that many people are hoping it's going to play in relieving some drought conditions. First, though, we got to talk about what exactly El Nino is. Yeah, it can be confusing, and so let's try to straighten it out with a few bullet points here. El Nino really refers to sort of the regional warming of the Pacific Ocean waters that lasts a long time. Months, we're talking about, not days or weeks. And what that can do is actually shift the weather patterns around the world, and that kind of shifting of the weather patterns patterns can be more or less depending on how much warming of the water we actually get. So I think a lot of people tuned in probably to that shifts the patterns yeah. around the world and wondering right. exactly how this warmer ocean water can do that. Right. Well, the warmer waters kind of move the enhanced areas of thunderstorms around the tropical Pacific. And wherever those thunderstorms happen to be, they can enhance their uh, outflow associated with them, can push the jet stream around a little bit in different ways. And when the jet stream is kind of moved around in different ways over the Pacific, Ocean, that can have an impact on downstream from there over North America. And this is what the jet stream pattern typically looks like during an El Nino winter. So a lot of people in California are probably looking at this because they've been dealing with terrible drought and they're really hoping that El Nino is going to help them see some of that wet weather. Yeah, it can. Of course, you know, it's no guarantee. It's like the El Nino, what it does, those thunderstorms, they ping the atmosphere and the ripples extend outward from that. So there's a lot of other variability in there that El Nino doesn't account for, but the idea is this kind of tips the scales in favor of a pattern that we're showing here. So the chance perhaps a little better as we go through a typical winter pattern and what we look at. Yeah, so the, with the jet stream moving along like that, or the subtropical jet, one branch of it anyway, and a northern branch coming in like that, that does, as you mentioned, set up for areas that are likely to be wetter than average, in particular in the west in California. That would be great news. Mm -hmm, definitely. That's some of the areas that have seen the worst drought conditions, so they'd love to see a lot of wet weather. They would as well as places in Texas and even in parts of the south. So we can only hope that this sort of pans out because as you said, some places desperately need the rain. That's right. Thank you so much, Dr. Mm -hmm. Postel. Back to you. Thanks guys. Hurricane Christina is not too close to land, but it's still a very powerful category four storm. We'll let you know where it is going and when it will finally weaken coming up. And more storms moving across the south tonight. Could they become severe and cause damage like you're seeing here? We're talking damaging winds, possibly some large hail. We'll go in depth coming up.
Everything that goes into a Linux system is engineered to save you up to half off your heating and cooling bills. Comforting, isn't it? Get up to $1,700 back or special financing on select Linux home comfort systems. For more information, contact your local Linux dealer. This family may love their tree, but a colony of ants will use these branches on a roof line like the Autobahn. But I know where they are, going from here to there. And what time of year to bait them with protein, when to bait with fat. I just shut down their freeway like a jackknife 18-wheeler. To catch a pest, you've got to think like a pest. Not just in any home, in your home. Orkin, pest control down to a science. Now at Boston Market, try our new Kentucky Bourbon Barbecue Sauce. A bold new taste for our St. Louis-style ribs with the perfect amount of heat. Also tastes great on our rotisserie chicken. Kentucky Bourbon Barbecue Sauce, only for a limited time at Boston Market. Make your way into Boston Market. Time for something good. I always say, be the man with the plan. But with less energy, moodiness, and a low sex drive, I had to do something. I saw my doctor. A blood test showed it was low testosterone, not age. We talked about Axaron, the only underarm low T treatment that can restore T levels to normal in about two weeks in most men. Axaron is not for use in women or anyone younger than 18 or men with prostate or breast cancer. Women, especially those who are or who may become pregnant, and children should avoid contact where Axaron is applied, as unexpected signs of puberty in children or changes in body hair or increased acne in women may occur. Report Report these symptoms to your doctor. Tell your doctor about all medical conditions and medications. Serious side effects could include increased risk of prostate cancer, worsening prostate symptoms, decreased sperm count, ankle, feet, or body swelling, enlarged or painful breasts, problems breathing while sleeping, and blood clots in the legs. Common side effects include skin redness or irritation where applied, increased red blood cell count, headache, diarrhea, vomiting, and increase in PSA. Ask your doctor about Axaron. Average. It's out there, convincing you that one donut hole couldn't possibly lead to another. Beat Average with GNC. Okay, kids, get ready. Is this a pool party? <laughs> oh, no. Look, we're happy with Xfinity. Their internet is faster and more reliable than Uverse. Speed is relativity, Tim. Let me demonstrate. Please don't. This is what raw speed looks like. Real speed. Is that cocoa butter? Yep. <laughs> Clear the runway. <laughs> Booyah! It's not wet yet. Don't get you by Uverse. Get the fastest, most reliable internet for all your devices, only with Xfinity from Comcast. So you're saying you're going to give me my credit score for free? Right? And then you can ask me for my credit card so you can charge me on the down low. Two weeks later, look, credit karma. Oh, are you talking to websites again? It's saying free credit score. Credit karma? Yeah, it's actually free. Look, you don't have to put in your credit card information. <sighs> credit karma. Really free credit scores. Really free. Fist bump. It's as easy as web.com. Call 1-800-862-9537 today. America's Morning Headquarters with Sam Champion. Not just a morning forecast, a morning show. AMHQ with Sam Champion, the Weather Channel's brand new morning show. Currently in our area, 82 degrees with thunderstorms in the area. Tonight, thunderstorms early, low 73. Chance of rain, 80%. Friday, partly cloudy with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm. High, 87. Here's our seven-day outlook.
Well, right now, it's time to go in depth uh, during the hurricane update, the tropical update. Hurricane specialist Michael Lowry is here looking. That was a pretty impressive storm and kind of happening or intensifying in a hurry. Pretty extraordinary, yeah, it uh, strengthened. So yesterday when we were looking at it, it was an 80 mile per hour hurricane. Overnight, it blew up to a 145 mile per hour hurricane. So the winds increased by 65 miles per hour in 12 hours. Want to take a guess at what the record is for the, for the quickest intensifying storm? Quickest intensifying storm, eight hours. It was 12 hours, oh. but with but with Wilma in 2005, which went okay. 87 miles per hour in 12 hours. So that was quick. So here's our high resolution infrared satellite picture. This is a loop, Chris, 36 hour loop. And you can see overnight that eye coming right out of the deepest thunderstorms indicated by the reds and the oranges now starting to collapse though. That's what happened overnight. Those thunderstorms becoming very organized around the center and that allowed it to really quicken, uh, really strengthen and, very, very quickly. And you don't have to know much about satellites when you look at this. That you see it just it has that look to it it does yeah I mean it's yeah. just very that donut feature symmetric as we call it so you can slice it down the middle on both sides of it looking you know very much alike the cloud pattern on the okay side so, so now we're looking at with the uh, the forecast models and all these lines so this is the intensity models that we had available two days ago and if you had to make a forecast for today which I'm drawing on here uh, it's very difficult Chris to make a forecast that was stronger than category two I mean none of our models these are these are all of our models we have dozens of these available to but us. you couldn't justify going stronger than that based on this, could you? You really couldn't. I mean, we've yeah. had this discussion. Can you go outside of that? You just can't. I mean, so if I'm going to make a forecast, I'm going to maybe put it on the high end of this, and that's exactly what the Hurricane Center did. The official forecast had it at a 65, or I'm sorry, a 74 mile per hour hurricane today, but in actuality, as we know, it intensified to a category four hurricane. It's these really quick um, strengthening what we call rapid intensifying storms. And just to let our viewers at home know, a rapid intensification is 35 mile per hour wind increase in 24 hours. Now this, as I mentioned, 65 miles per hour in 12 hours. So very, very quickly uh, strengthening. And they're very difficult to forecast. Intensity is bad enough, but these rapid intensification are even more difficult, but not all that uncommon. One in three in storms uh, undergo this rapid intensification. But here's the scary stat, Chris, is that most category five or four storms undergo rapid intensification. In fact, nearly all of them do. So if we have one of these that's sitting right off the coast, that's the one you have to worry about. Right, because you're not going to have the warning that a really, really strong storm is heading your way. You're not going to have much time. Yeah, and we just don't have a lot of skill in forecasting these storms. Take a look at the intensity forecast skill. When I talk about skill, think of it in terms of averages. So if I give you a forecast, I could give you the average high for tomorrow and the average low, but we use physically based computer models to give you a better forecast. It improves what you would get by just looking at the averages. So if it's a skillful forecast, it's giving us value based uh, better than what you would get on the historical data or climatology. If it's not skillful, it's not giving you so if it's not value. Skillful, it means that you can just go with the average. Just go with the average and you get a better and forecast. And not even look at the computer model. And so look beyond about uh, two days or so, our forecast skill goes down tremendously in all of our models. The official forecast skill kind of bottoms out after about three days. So it's really the tricky part of the forecast is the intensity forecast because beyond two or three days, we have little to no skill in the computer models that we have available so, to us. But you do have better confidence or higher confidence in the direction, where it's going. We do, and that's what's really improved here over the past 20 years or so is that forecast track error. Go back to 1990, Chris, those error, errors at 48 hours, 200 miles, we've cut those in half now. About 100 miles is the average error at 48 hours for our forecast. All right, Hurricane Specialist Michael Lowry, thank you. Let's go back to Kelly. Thanks, guys. Going nowhere fast. New York City is just one of the big cities seeing travel trouble from storms. We're going to take a look at the flight delays and how long they should last. That is coming up here on Weather Center Live. Plus, it is another weekend in June. We've got your weekend forecast. Also, it's Flag Day on Saturday. Lots of things going on. It's time to be patriotic. Wear your red, white, and blue. Columbus, Ohio, we've got the Anthem for America going on. It looks like a beautiful day for this. Sunshine and temperatures in the mid 70s Get out there and enjoy. We'll be right back. Yeah, I'm married. Does it matter? You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state.
Nobody told us to expect it. Intercourse that's painful due to menopausal changes. The problem isn't likely to go away on its own. So it's time we do something about it. And there's help. Premarin Vaginal Cream, a prescription that does what no over-the-counter product was designed to do. It provides estrogens to help rebuild vaginal tissue and makes intercourse more comfortable. Premarin Vaginal Cream treats vaginal changes due to menopause and moderate to severe painful intercourse caused by these changes. Don't use Premarin Vaginal Cream if you've had unusual bleeding, breast or uterine cancer, blood clots, liver problems, stroke or heart attack, are allergic to any of its ingredients or think you're pregnant. Side effects may include headache, pelvic pain, breast pain, vaginal bleeding and vaginitis. Estrogens may increase your chances of getting cancer of the uterus, strokes, blood clots or dementia, so use it for the shortest time based on goals and risks. Estrogen should not be used to prevent heart disease, heart attack, stroke, or dementia. Ask your doctor about Premarin Vaginal Cream and go to PremarinVaginalCream.com. This is worth talking about. The day we rescued Riley was a truly amazing day. Without Angie's List, I don't know if we could have found all the services we needed for our Riley. For over 18 years, we've helped people take care of the things that matter most. Join today at Angie'sList.com. New Hershey's Spreads. Bring the delicious taste of Hershey's chocolate to anything. Everything. With new Hershey's Spreads, the possibilities are delicious. Yeah. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. <gasps> no! Energizer protects your devices from damaging leaks. I'm mom at the playground and the dog park. The kids get trail mix and you get a delicious Milo's Kitchen chicken meatball. I wish you liked my cooking that much. Milo's Kitchen, made in the USA with chicken or beef as the number one ingredient. The best treats come from the kitchen. Behold a beauty revolution. Radiance. The new paint studio at 8. Oh, snap. Featuring the number one rated label in semi-gloss paint, Clark & Kensington. That's longhand for awesome. Ace is a place to help the hardware folks. Helpful is beautiful. This is day two of Delaney learning to ride her bike. Currently in our area, 82 degrees with thunderstorms in the area. Tonight, thunderstorms early, low 73. Chance of rain, 80%. Friday, partly cloudy with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, high 87. Here's our seven day outlook. Morning Headquarters with Sam Champion. Not just a morning forecast, a morning show. AMHQ with Sam Champion, the Weather Channel's brand new morning show. Check out this new picture just into the Weather Channel. Those are two by fours piercing the roof of this home in Russell Springs, Kansas. Yeah, what could have done that? Well, it was a tornado. The National Weather Service did confirm that it was an EF1 tornado that hit the area and did that kind of damage last night. Well, that's just one of the signs of severe weather season. The tornadoes also rain, hail, and big clouds, big supercells, those big storms there. We've seen a lot of them over the past few days, and we could see even more before all said and done. From the area seeing storms now to what's coming next, we've got you covered with expert analysis only the Weather Channel can give you.
Chris Warren and Kelly Cass here with you for Weather Center Live. Let's get straight to our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, for a check of where the storms are firing right now. Dr. Forbes, concerned about tornadoes in Texas tonight. Yeah, there certainly could be some of that. Arkansas and Texas are the places in the central U.S. at least that have the most severe storms at the moment. And they're not real widespread, but they could get more so. There's two severe thunderstorms in Texas, and they're near and inside this tornado watch that goes until midnight, uh, along with a tornado threat, two and a half inch hail and 70 mile per hour winds, a possibility. So uh, let's see, will that advance? Yes, it will. Uh, some of the storms that are ongoing today thus far have a sort of a memory of where the storms le last night left off. At the very beginning of this movie, see the highest top thunderstorms in Oklahoma, they moved east and dissipated, but out on the edges of where they left off, that's where we're getting the new storms fire up. Sometimes that has to do with the fact that the rain cooled air has left a sort of a small scale front associated with these storms. There have been some big uh, storms uh, off to the north and west of Memphis, 71 mile per hour in uh, Poinsett County, Arkansas. There's been some vehicles pushed off the road, some roof damage. That's mostly moving off to the north suburbs 